Before we bring our, our guest on, how did you find out about uh, our guest? Well, actually, once a week, I do a kidney news a check-in just to see what's new, what's what's really going on, and what's re sorry, what's relevant. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought his story was pretty awesome. Mm. You know? Yeah, I remember when you sent it to me, it was like, you know, we got to find him yes. and do a story. Yeah, I was you, like, whoa, okay. Because he actually sells them himself. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. doesn't ship them out or whatever. He sells them himself. Right, right. Well, let's get on with the show. I'm anxious to meet him and, and talk to our guests. So without further ado, we're going to bring on Michael Scott. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Hey, everything's good tonight. I'm glad Great. to be on the show. Thank you for uh, having me on the show. Sure. Mike, what part of Wisconsin are you from? I mean, I know you're not from there. You're from Mississippi. But what part of Wisconsin do you live? Uh, right now, I live in De Pere, Wisconsin, which is like right. It's like a suburb right outside of uh, Green Bay. Mm -hmm. well, so you know, I moved up here. My wife is actually from uh, Wisconsin. So we moved up here from Las Vegas. Cause she wanted to come home and be close to mom. So uh, sure, I think sure, I absolutely, right. And I just wanted to thank you for your service. I know you're a 
uh, retired United States uh, Army uh, soldier. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, Mike, as we ask all our guests, I mean, we know you're an entrepreneur now. You sow. You're on the news. And I didn't get a chance to download uh, the news article that Tamika and I saw. How did all that come about? First, how did kidney disease hit you to bring you to this point to be on this show tonight? Well, at first, when I was uh, back in the military and I, I came back from Desert Storm, and I was in Fort Bliss, and at one point, I uh, woke up and I couldn't see. So they, they took me up to the uh, hospital up there, and they did a bunch of tests. And after all the tests and two days of testing, they basically said, okay, well, what's the only thing we could find is that you have kidney failure, the start of kidney failure. And they told me I probably would end up having like 20 years before I actually even have to even worry about it, but mm -hmm. that, that it was it was there. So at that time, back in '95, I decided to get out and you know go back home myself. But then, for the last couple of years, I've been then uh, it got worse two years ago, and I, I had to end up going on dialysis. So they basically you know, told me the truth that about how many years it was going to be. So there was, it's, mm -hmm. I kind of, I was already kind of comparing me you know, preparing myself for it over the mm -hmm. last 20 years. It's just that, that last two years or that year before I actually had to go on dialysis, it was, it came, it came on fast. I used to be a, um, I was a uh, representative uh, for Kellogg. I was always on the road. And one day I just, I was in the hotel. Got and they sick. Kellogg, the uh, cereal? cereal yeah, cereal company. I worked for wow. them for about four years as a representative mm. for them. I, got, so, I had stock in them at one time. <laughs> me too, but mm -hmm. I still don't work for them no more. So, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I ended up. I got real sick in the hospital. And my face swelled up. So, And I went back after I got back to Eau Claire, and they basically told me, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, my levels was getting down really low. So it, it, they probably said about in another year, I probably had to start dialysis, which I had to start. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, a, so when you started, did you start while you was in the military or after you got out? No, so after I got out, after I got out, they basically, they, when they told me I had about 20 years before I, it actually, my kidneys would probably get to the point where they were really failing. And that's when uh, I started, when I moved up here from Las Vegas, I was going to the Minneapolis hospital and they was monitoring everything. And then basically I'll go in every three months and they'll tell me where I was at. So... So then, that at that point, I started started doing the dialysis at the at the Devita unit. Once I really got to a point where I was getting sick all the time, mm -hmm. couldn't keep nothing down. So it was like, well, I went in and they told me I was at thirteen percent. Mm. So I was like, well, I think it's time because I, if I can't stand to eat eat or do anything, it's like to keep food down. Then I needed to. I guess I feel like I need to start Dallas. So I basically retired at that point and and started started dialysis. Mm -hmm. What kind of symptoms were you experiencing at that time? At that time, it was like uh, uh, sickness, like like for as having stomach sickness. I couldn't, you know, getting sick all the time, throwing mm -hmm. up, nausea. It was. To the point where a little dizzy here, and that basically it got to a point where you just don't want to get out of bed because he's you just feel so so bad. So, wow, wow! Yeah. Did you have the metallic taste in your mouth? Yes, yes, really? yes, that's, yes. You know what? I've been since since I started the medication. I forgot about that taste. <laughs> yes, yes, the right. metallic taste couldn't really keep nothing down. So it was like I told my wife, it's, it's time for me to go on dialysis and retire from work. And so let me ask you, because just like a lot of um, people that get hit with kidney disease and got to start dialysis, did you did it get you down at first when you started? 
Right. It, it's but I, honestly, I want to say about that 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 year and a half where it really got worse. You started feeling like like you just you don't want to do anything. You're not motivated. You're fatigued. You just down, depressed. And then honestly, I'm like, I didn't really know what depression was till until dialysis. And I got to mm-hmm. the point where I had to go on dialysis because it's just it's you get to a point where you're miserable. So, and after I went on dialysis, I felt better. And I I went up to the VA, and that's when they first they put the port in up around my short or up around my shoulder. And and you talking about, did my, you're talking about this? After uh, yes, yes. Yeah, they put a catheter in up there, and basically and that's where they was using it at one time. Mm-hmm. And and the reason I I decided to go with the Fischler, it was the uh, the doctor told me, well, you I like to fish. He said, well, you can't go out there, you can't, you're not gonna be able to go fishing anymore because you fall in the water, you're pretty much done. Mm-hmm. They said you can't get that catheter wet, so it was like I did that for about six months, and I was like, you know what? I need to get the fish. I need to get fish to put in because it's 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 springtime rolling around, and I got to be out there with a rod in my mm-hmm. hand catching some fish. So, mm-hmm. so that's why I went and got the the fish done so I can be able to go back out fish, not having a fear of falling in in, in the water. Mm-hmm. So, so so I know Timmy want to ask questions, but let me ask you one more question. So yes. so Mike, um, when you first got hit with this disease. And you went in the hospital and they start dialysis. At, at any time did they discuss your your treatment options of what you wanted to do, or you were kind of cat, cat you know, kind of cattled into the uh, outpatient unit? Well, that's when I first started. They basically told me what they were going to do was to start with the catheter up in my neck, because that's basically, I guess, that's the first part of uh, when you first start dialysis. Sure. They put the catheter in, so. But then after a, a, a while, the the uh, specialist up there at the VA in, in Minneapolis, she just basically said that, yeah, I was talking to her about fishing and stuff like that, and she that she was the one that basically told me that I ain't, I'm not going to be able to go out fishing with that catheter because if I fall in, in the lake, I can pretty much call myself done. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that, but I like to fish. So I was like, well, after the six months, I decided to say, okay, well, it's time to just, I'm going to go see about getting a fistula. I told my wife I'm going to see about getting a fistula put in. So. Right, but you was going to end center, right? Huh? You, was going, you were going to the clinic, right? Where I started going to the clinic. Right, yeah, but right. what I'm asking, what I'm asking, in the hospital before you got discharged out, before you went to that outpatient clinic, did anyone come to you and ask you or educate you about any other type of form of dialysis like home dialysis peritoneal well they they basically told me at the at the va hospital that the catheter was going to be the first step to put the catheter in and then they and then the specialist told me that yeah eventually you'll get to a point where you probably want to want to get the fissure put in but then she said it was the option of of doing the home dialysis, and after I found out what you have to go through for the home dialysis, I was like, "No, nah, I don't think I." So oh, what, <laughs> what was the determining factor to make you say no? Um, you know, dialyzing in the comfort of your own home, opposed to going into a, a clinic where someone else uh, literally has your life in their hands. Right. Well, the deciding factor for me was I actually have. Uh, at the time, we had two dogs. My other dog passed away, but. We had two dogs, and and from what they was telling me, you have to have the area where you're doing this that has to be extremely clean, and and you can't get dust in it, or you can't get pet hair, you can't get, I don't know. It's it was like it's that's kind of a myth, myth but mm-hmm. well, that's that's and that's where I was like, well, I have pets, so I'm not gonna be able to not have pet hair around because a lot of times the dogs are either laying on me or right beside me. So it was like, well, I'm just going to do, I'll go into the clinic and do it, start doing that first. But mm-hmm. after they told me what you have to go through for the home dialysis, that changed my mind right there because uh, you, know, you could have been home hemo and maybe your wife could have stuck you. You didn't have to do the peritoneal 
Well, and that's the problem, the see? Huh? That's the problem. My wife, she ain't gonna stick me. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, then. I'm probably, but you know I, what, though? I, I can see them not really pushing it for you because you VA and they know they're gonna right. get the money if you go in the center. That's in, not into, the, into the clinic, right, mm -hmm. right. But that's the one of the problems was my wife like, no, I'm not sticking you. I'm not. She she can't stand the sight of blood, and and it it, it just freaked her out that the fact that she will have to be doing something to actually help through that process mm -hmm. to, to do it at home. And I'm right. like, well, I rather go put my life my <laughs> my life in in the people's hands in the clinic that they know what, right. they know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. So. So that's why mm -hmm. I ended up in the clinic because my wife wasn't, she wasn't going to have it. She, she sees the sight of blood. She just starts getting wow. sick. So herself, so two people sick don't need to be, <laughs> I'm already <laughs> sick. So I don't need her to be throwing up too. Right. You know? Right. Mm. right. It's a quick question. Um, yeah. Before you even got on, sorry, before you even got on dialysis, did you know anything about kidney disease? I had no idea about mm. kidney disease. You know, over the days, I'll say for that, about three years ago when they were telling me now that my numbers was changing, that was giving me little information about about dialysis and about the, what I'm gonna have to go through. But they 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 ended up to me, it's like a it's like a top secret mm -hmm. thing when it comes to the doctors. They 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 only give you bits and pieces of information, mm -hmm. and that. No, I didn't really find out about dialysis until I was actually oh. at the unit. You know, <clears throat> it's like that's not the, to me. And I, 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 I want to know what's going on, what's going to happen. And it was like, well, you'll find out when you get there, or when you, even when I got to the to the Davida unit, it, they was still holding back information, and you know, you don't know what you what they supposed to be pulling. And you oh, oh, don't I know so well. <laughs> Right, you're sitting in the chair, and all you know else, you're sitting there, you're cramping, and 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 all you can do is wave at somebody, and they tell you to breathe. I'm like, <laughs> what? <"No." laughs> Mika, what? Breathe, breathe. It's like, just take deep breaths. You get, you get. No, no, something ain't right here, because this supposed to make me feel better, not make me feel worse. So, mm -hmm. and that's where I slowly started after that first session at the at the Vita. That's when I started trying to figure out more about. I already knew about the machines because I used to work for Culligan, okay. and we used to go in when I first moved up here into Wisconsin from Vegas. I was working for Culligan for a while, and I used to have to go to the hospitals and clean the the units and stuff. So yeah, I pretty much started finding out about the, how the machine operates and stuff because I was curious. And I wanted to know, you know, I'm in here cleaning them. I need to know exactly what's going on. So cause I. Me, I feel like I got somebody's life in my hands if I don't clean this machine right. Right. So that's why I kind of started figuring out and learning more about that the right. process. Right. What made you want to start covering the access? Well, again, I when I was when I was uh, first started advertising, I was advertising on my truck, mm -hmm. and I had uh, magnets all on my truck, and a gentleman came into to the restaurant and he was like, hey, that's your truck out there? And I said, yeah. He said, he told me he had that uh, he had kidney failure and that he needed to, he had got a kidney, but I guess it's like for two years he was doing the, uh, doing the fistula right. and, and to have his blood clean. And then he put his arm down because he had his arms up. When once he put his arm down, that vein in his arm, the, the fistula vein, stuck out so far it's like i looked at that and went like what is what is going on there mm. he's like, oh, no. he said, oh that, that happens after you they use it so many times or if you get to a point where it'll keep growing that's an that, aneurysm mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. i was like whatever that is i don't want any part of so so at that point that's when i came up with the idea for the sleep i came up mm -hmm. with i'm well, at first I went out and was looking to see what was out there on the on the well. There was nothing. And, right. And couldn't really find anything. And everything said compression. And I'm like, well, it can't be compression, okay. compression. It needs to be light compression. So mm -hmm. I said, I, well, since I can't find nothing, I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. right. After Can we see a picture of it? Huh? 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we see that, I'm sorry. Kevin, remember, go ahead and show the picture. I'll ask you after you show the picture of your compression. All right. Wait well, a minute. Is, Let me. Uh, is, okay. Go ahead and put it up. All right. This is the one that's on my arm that I normally wear. I, I wear a couple of them, like white, blue, and stuff like that, the different colors. It all depends on. I'm one of the people that have to be color color coordinated, coordinated. So I'll put it on and I wear it like whenever I'm going out to to do something. So if, even if people ask me to sell, I can be able to tell them exactly what it is, why I have it on my arm, and then they'll know. But it's easy. You can take it off. But take it off. And Basically, this is this 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 is what it is. It's just I have Velcro on the inside of it, the soft ones on the inside of it, and then the the other Velcro is on the out over on the other side, and that's basically what holds it together is the Velcro. But the reason I did it this way is to have it where you can actually it stretches is a stretch material. So it's it'll it'll actually give some give. Even if you put it on too you put it on tight, it still it stretches enough where it'll it'll actually not be so tight on your arm. It, and I want it to be where you can actually adjust this yourself. You know, even if you go to dialysis, they can help you put it on at dialysis, but then you can also put it on yourself. I put mine on myself all the time whenever I get ready to go somewhere. So, but this is basically the sleeve that I came, came up with the, the, the finished product. Wow. So, wow. I like so, it. huh? Yeah, I, like I do. That. I do. So, Mike, we kind of jumped a little ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. Right. okay. And we definitely get back to your products. So, you on dialysis, how did you find out about a transplant list if you never knew anything about kidney disease? Did anyone tell you or you found out on your own? How did that process come about? Well, uh, when I first started getting sick and getting sicker and they actually sent me to Pittsburgh because uh, Minnesota, the VA only sent the Pittsburgh is Minnesota's transplant center. So they sent me out there and that's when they basically they did a bunch of tests because you have to go do a bunch of tests at the VA first. Did they pay for it or you had to go on your own? Yeah, they pay for it. They pay oh, for everything. Wow. For the hotel right? stay, flight, wow. everything. That's one of the benefits of being a veteran. They took care of all of it and especially being at 100% disabled. Mm -hmm. So they took care of the flight, everything. They flew me and my wife out. We sat down and we had a, con had a conversation with the surgeon that actually was going to be doing it, doing it and, they, and they explained to you a whole lot of what the process is uh, over the next year or so. So after the surgeon basically told me, well, it'll be about five years, to, pretty much to five and five and a half years before you probably actually end up getting a kidney. But at that time, they after all the tests they done, they said I qualify for the list to be on that the national kidney list. And that's when they put me on, on the list at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I was just thinking about I wonder if the VA like has Tamika, uh, you know, a, a list maybe ask the soldiers so they get killed in combat or something. Maybe they can harvest those organs, but I don't think that could happen because, you know, if you're over in Iraq or Afghanistan, if you get killed out in the field, it may be a period of time before they get the body, uh, All right. you know, back to wherever it's like the A station, or, you know, wherever. The right. you know point is to extract mm -hmm. them, but wow, okay, so you got on the national list, and so from the time you started dialysis, what was the wait time for you? Uh, basically, they told me that it was going to be about five and a half years before I actually will probably be get to the to a point on that list where I, I can have actually be ready to have get a kidney, but they told me that I needed to be ready at any given time because if somebody else 
that's that's up there in front of me decided that they didn't want the kidney, then you have to be ready at the mo- at a minute's notice to get on the plane and fly there to get able to get the to have the uh, kidney surgery done. So, but yeah, they told me it's going to be about five and a half years, and I kind of like, well, okay, just basically at that point, just said, okay, yeah, I'm on, I'm on dialysis. Right. But, but what kind of motivated me was once I got to the units and you see what actually goes on mm-hmm. at the units, kind of like motivated me to to leave the Vita because mm-hmm. me at the Vita, I, I felt that they would just want a paycheck. They know they was gonna get the money from the VA, so mm-hmm. it's like they don't care enough about their patients. And I'm just like, and I, and I just told them, "You're like, right. You know what? I'm, You're I'm, right. I'm going to the VA. <laughs> I'm going back to. That's what I told the the doctor. Cause I say to me personally, you, you, you're not in here enough to be making decisions for me when all oh, you come in here once a month, look at a chart, and go." Oh yeah, let's let's turn these numbers up. No, no, I'm I, I don't. I, that's to me, that's hands off care. I need hands on care. I need for you to be there because you know if I don't know what's going on and they ain't telling me, the nurses would sit there and go look at you when you ask them questions and they say, well, you got to ask the doctor. I'm like, okay, what is this a top secret? This is my body. I need to know what y'all doing to me. Mm-hmm. So and that's, that's why, why I was talking about home dialysis. Right. right. Do you think that the staff wasn't attentive enough or everything was just too fast paced on turnover? Oh, uh, I think that, that they, to me, the nurses and the techs was afraid. Like they, they, I went to, I'm going to give you an example. When I was started at the Vita, I had to go back home to Mississippi because my niece, my niece passed away. So, and I went back to Mississippi, went back there and I had a, uh, I had to make a schedule service down at the for Sidious, uh down at their unit and when i got there and i was sitting there and the guy was like the tech he was sitting there he was like oh yeah i'm looking at your numbers we got the stuff from the what they set down he said yeah it seems like these numbers are just a little bit out of whack so i think you need to be here and here and here and i was sitting there talking to him and he gave me a whole lot of information about what was going on why he was changing the numbers and what he thought was best for me. And that's where it, it made me go. It, make, it gives you a sense of being, okay, you can take a breath. Because mm-hmm. you already said, like, you feel like you can't breathe. Right. So I was like, all right. I thought, and then I, was, and I, told, I told him, I said, I thought the people at the, at the Vita was doing something wrong. I just couldn't put my finger on it. But right. I just I knew something wasn't right. And from then on, when I went back up there to where I was getting the dial- getting the care at the mm-hmm. Vita unit, I said that told him, I'm say, listen, I had a long talk with the tech down there in, in Louisiana because I'm from Vicksburg mm-hmm. and I had to go right across the river to, to Louisiana for a service. And I had they told me everything I needed to know. And I'm like, y'all sit here and act like y'all scared to talk to the patients, to tell them what's going on, why y'all making decisions, why y'all making changes, and why do you, why they sit here cramping when they don't need to be cramping. I right. said, so for at that point, to me, I said, basically, at this point, y'all not going to be making any decisions um, on changing that machine unless I talk to the doctor and, and, and y'all, and if basically we, we agree that this is the best decision. Mm-hmm. So, right. Right. Did you ever think about doing any research yourself to see well, we what's started. going on? Well, we started, me and my wife started doing research when I first got on. That's when I first, good. well, the first time I went to Davida and I came back home and I was cramping so bad that basically from the time I got off of the of like one o'clock the day, the first time I had had the uh, service done at Davida yeah. to eleven o'clock the next morning, I was cramping from that time frame over twelve, over twelve hours of cramping. Wow. And it was like, no. And at that point, where we kind of started looking up, seeing what was out, out on the National Kidney website, mm-hmm. looking at different places to try to get more information. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, Mike. Yes. So, I guess what I'm hearing from you is you, it, it told you about five years. So, 
you didn't wait. You went out and, and found your donor. Right, right. The How reason did you do I, that? The reason I did that, Steve, it was like one of the guys at the VA unit, They, I came in that morning and they said that he had passed away. And they had a cold red at the VA unit for another guy. Another one of the patients, one of the one of the veteran veterans that was in there, and that kind of freaked me out because mm -hmm. I'm like, so I just can't sit here anymore and just be sitting in this chair in four hours, four and a half hours a day. Then they tell me they're trying to make it maybe pull it up to five hours. What? I'm like, well, yeah, they, <laughs> I they mean, probably... I can see that if you was at home, but in the unit, that's some strenuous stuff because. They'll right. be running you at a high blood flow rate at 500 and right. And they was they was telling me that uh, well because you got so much muscles and this and this and that we're, we're just not getting you clean enough. And I'm like, something ain't right. <laughs> right. I went back to that something ain't right. Right, but mm -hmm. they know it's a process. Like especially with you being new, it's a process. Right, right, right. It's it's a process, but it was to the point where it's like to me that process was getting longer and longer to me. It was like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, you already told me I'll be here three and a half. Then you change it to four. Now right. you talking about you want to go to four and a half? I said I'm, I would stay here all day. So <laughs> yeah, but, but didn't you make me ask it? Five hours is just too long for the for the. I think people run at that high. Pump speed five and a half down in Texas. Oh, at five fifty, large guy. No, right. mm -hmm. no, he do better just coming every day for a three hour treatment for his heart. Right. So, right. Mike, I'm sure we have some people here watching that may be on the transplant list and may be wondering how did you get your transplant if you didn't get it from a cadaver in the hospital. Of course, don't just start dialysis. You hear the news of five years and you say, No, I'm not going to wait that long. Where did you go? How, how did you what did you do to find your donor? I what I did was what my mother in law was like, she said that she had read something or seen something on on the news or on TV about somebody what they advertised on their vehicle. And she told my wife, she's like, well, tell him to go get him, put a magnet on his truck. And at first I was like, hmm, that, that don't sound, that don't sound good. Magnet on the truck with my phone number. People just be calling, randomly calling me with, with stupid phone calls. I'm like, I don't know. But after that day when they told me the guy passed away, and I, I, I became friends with him. And he told me that he had passed away, and and then they had another cold red, and I just made up my mind. Then I called my wife from the Dallas unit, and I said, "You know what? Order more magnets. Order the magnets. She ordered. She ordered two. About a month later, I said, "You know what? That ain't loud enough. Order some. I want a magnet for the tailgate. I want a magnet for each door. I I had five to six magnets on that truck." So when I was going down the highway, the news people, the news girl, Emily, she seen my truck and she called the number and said, hey, I'm so and so and so from the news, Channel 2 News. Uh, do you mind doing a story? And I say, like, at first I went, say what? Who? News? Come on. She said, no, no, this is not a prank. This is, I'm, I'm, channel, I'm so and so from the news. I seen your truck. And I would like to do a story on you, and that's when that's basically where it started. That was back, I want to say May, around the May time frame, March, probably March time frame of last year, when I uh, I first put the magnets on the truck, mm -hmm. and then around May is when she she went out, May around by, about May when she seen it, and I did the we did the first interview, and then from the first interview I had. Phone calls, emails, had people just, it's like, I put the phone down, it was, I had 10 Are messages. Are you serious? I had 10 messages on my phone, calls all day, all night. I had to cut the phone off because it was people was calling me, leaving messages. 
and I was like, okay, you know, and now we answered everybody. We put them in a, in a in a binder. I went back and answered everybody, and from the first person who called me and just went down and basically said, okay, thank you. This is the process. We sent out what the process was because Pittsburgh gave me a list. Huh? Now I'm sorry, I was talking to Tamika. Oh well, the Pittsburgh oh. unit oh, they give you, you a, okay. they give you a list, and the list will tell them exactly what they tell the the donor exactly what they need to do, or what they if they wanted to be a donor, this is what need to be done. And the, and the reason and well another reason why, I love my sister. I got two sisters, my baby sister and my one of my older sisters. I got eight sisters actually. Wow. And my sister basically said that they was gonna go and get it done, go to do the testing. Well, my baby sister couldn't do it because she had high blood pressure. VA would not take a kidney from anyone who has high blood pressure. Mm. They just won't. My sister in Houston, uh, uh, well, she's supposed to be the backup. Didn't call me. I didn't hear from her for about two years. The whole time I was on dialysis, I didn't hear from her. And I'm like leaving her messages. And what I had did, I told them from the get go, if you feel like you can't do this, don't just tell right. me you can't do it, and and that's that's it. Right. I, I got a little bit more upset because she wouldn't call me and tell me. I'm like, right. Not that the fact she that she couldn't that she was scared to do it. Just tell me. Don't be scared to tell me. Right. I'm like, I'm your baby brother. Tell me. Hey, Mike. And, yes. And one question I wanted to ask you, right quick. When you came into the unit, before you. Uh, put the magnets on. You said your friend passed away. How did that make you feel when you found that out? Well, I mean, were you nervous? Did you think maybe this might happen to me? Can you just share a little bit of that? Uh, yes. It got to a point where after they told me that what had happened, and it, and I was still sitting there in the in the in the room doing my treatment, I was like, well, it's this just this it's just scary. It'll it'll actually turn around and shock you. That somebody that you just that you know that you sit in there and you talk to is gone, and it just it just put me to the point where I was like, you know what, I got to do something about this. I cannot sit here and wait. If I'm gonna have my fate, if this is gonna be my fate, then I'm gonna do everything I can to change it, and that's what I did. Did anyone else in the unit? Sorry, did anyone else in the unit follow the same route you did, like adding stuff to their vehicles, adding magnets or flags? Uh, no. Well, a bunch of the guys was they they veterans, and a bunch of them was older older gentlemen, about about in their sixties, probably around the seventies. And it was up. It was one other guy, one other young guy that was kind of closer to my age. He was trying to do get a, a get a. Uh, he said he had his, his brother was going mm -hmm. was going to donate for him, mm -hmm. but the last time I checked, I went back up there and talked to him. He was still there, and I'm like, "What happened? You know, you supposed to get your brother supposed to do it." He said, "Still waiting." So you know, I don't know. What, you know what I learned in the unit? So I've been doing this. Let's say my son is 20, 21 years, and what I noticed is so what I noticed is a lot of people family say that they're going to donate. And then right. when it comes time, they're still in that chair five years later because the mm. family backed out or they mm. didn't follow up, you know. Right. Um, mm. and, and, and I think it's just really messed up when they say that if you're if you can't do it, it's OK. Right. You know, right. it's mm -hmm. OK, but I don't think they understand that it's OK if you can't do it. I think they right. feel some type of way. But I also feel like don't lead them on because they're anticipating and they're not getting comfortable. They don't want to know nothing about dialysis because they're waiting for their family member to do what they need to do to get it so they can get the kidney. Right. And that was one of my factors where after I, I was talking to my, my baby sister and, and the, she's a year older than me and I was talking to her and I'm like, what is going on? Why have some Rose called me? I done left the messages and everything, and she was like, I don't know. I'm like, Donna, just tell me what's going on because I'm not going to be mad I, uh, you know, about it. I just, because I already told y'all, if you can't do it, don't do it. I don't want you to put your life online for me. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Right. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it came down to. And, and, and the factor after 
didn't hear from her, and, that, and that's what made me go start doing dialysis because mm -hmm. she had already said before I started the process of going to dialysis, they was gonna go get tested. Mm -hmm. So come that come June, July, August, it was like okay, I got to start dialysis because if I wait on Rose, I'm, I'm probably gonna die. So so I was like, you know what, time to go do dialysis. I told my wife I gotta go do dialysis. <laughs> right, so, Mike. Take us, take us to the day you received a call that changed your life. Um, how did you know, or the donor, the person that who reached out? Can you take us to that day? That day, uh, she called. She actually reached out to me on the on email, and then she um, basically we we started emailing back and forth, and I was like, well, okay, what? Uh, uh, what she said, what's the process? I sent her all the information. We made sure she had all that information. And then it was to the point where she was like, well, can I call you? And I was like, yeah, sure. So after I started talking to her, we actually met up here. I didn't, I didn't even know she was here in Wisconsin. And I didn't even know that. And after I talked to her, she was like, well, I'm going to be in town. I was like, okay, be in town. Uh, and then that's when I found out she was right down, pretty much 40 miles away from Green Bay. And she wanted to meet up and we met up at, at the restaurant and sat down and talked to her and her husband about everything. And from that point on, it was like, all right, I'm, she said, I'm going to go get tested. I'm going to see you about all this and see what I can do. And if, 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 it, if it works out that I'm a match, then. You don't gotta worry. I'm gonna I'm 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 make sure everything's taken care of, and we're gonna we'll, we're gonna do the process and get the kid. I'll give you a kidney with no problem. At that point, I was still in denial because it's like, okay, you say you're gonna do it. My sister said they was gonna do it too. So, Mike, so you 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 doubt just you doubt people, right? Mike, can I ask you a question? And then I know yes, to make it, you know, ask, but what can you tell me the race? Of your donor, uh, she's she's Caucasian. Okay, uh, and, mm -hmm. right. And and the nicest person, as far as I'm concerned, she's my savior, guardian angel. She really saved me and 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 gave me the belief to believe back in people. Mm. Because you you get to a point when you going through these processes that when you yeah. need somebody to save your mm -hmm. life, you get to a point where you just you start doubting people. You stop believing that people actually that there are good people out there, right? And I, mean, I, I think I think that's where some of the depression on the machine comes from, the, yeah. because it's these people that they expected to get their kidneys and they didn't. So then they feel right. like they're stuck on the machine because somebody said they were going to do something and they didn't. Mm -hmm. Right. So then right. you lose hope. Right. And that was that's the whole thing. I got to a point where after the situation with my family, my sisters, and it was like started losing hope. You started just like, OK, if my family won't take care of me, then why would somebody else do it? Wow. And then after that point yeah, and after the point, we I started advertising and started getting all these phone calls, email. Mm. I'm telling you, every way you can communicate. People were sending me communi communi communication, and I was like, "These people, really? That's a hundred and thirty people." Mike, wow. let me ask you a question. Yeah. What's the difference? You was you were on dialysis. Yes. Just like thousands of other people, you yes. went and got tested or talked about transplant, yes. and they told you what. And I know what the decide factor is, but what make it what made a difference from you getting all these calls and people rushing in to wanna uh, try to save your life opposed to someone else that's on Facebook right now? Because uh, I'm sure Jerry Brown, half of the Brown Brother production team is watching. They do graphic. Uh, artistry and design to um, help kidney warriors who are looking for a live donors to search. And so I've seen people who they've been advocating 
ever since I've, I've known them, maybe a year and a half to two years. Mm-hmm. Still, you know, they had some success, people seeing their uh, advertisement, maybe donating. Mm-hmm. But for the hundreds and thousands of other people that's on the list that can't find nobody that's looking and no one's calling them or and they feel like they not going to get a kidney, they stuck. What's the difference between you and them and each, you have kidney disease as well. What, what's, what's the difference on you getting a hundred of calls and other people not? Well, one thing I guess is the, the only difference I can see is the fact that I'm, I'm a veteran. That's probably the only difference. But the problem is, Steve, that a lot of people out here, we got millions and millions of people out here that actually want to help people, but they just don't know. And it's the, in, the, in the time frame that I put the magnets on the truck, I found that people pulled over and basically said, hey, what can I do to help you? People mm. stop me at the store and say, hey, what's going on? How do you get tested? Mm. And I give them the information. And I tell them a lot of people just don't know. And the biggest thing is you have to educate people. Uh, I, and I found this out through the, that whole process is just people need to be educated. Mm-hmm. And in and, and, and the donors, in the, in, the, in the people that's on dialysis, I know it, it's hard. We get to a point where we're hard, we, we're sad, we're depressed. But you have to sit here and say, okay, it can be done. You have to sit here and, and go by any means necessary. Right. Put it on your truck. Put it on. The, and, and, and if you can, if you know somebody in the new, and what really took off for me was because the first about five months, nothing. I got no calls or nothing. And then after it hit the news, it was like like the wildfire. It mm-hmm. was. I had people calling me from Africa, from Canada, Great Britain, Hawaii. Wow. I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. I'm well, wait, like, wait, them people who call you from those countries, they're going to travel to Wisconsin and, and pay for but, that and everything? One guy was like, you tell me when I need to be there. And if I get and, and, and get all the arrangements done, and I and I get a ticket, I'll fly over there tomorrow. And I'm like, it don't work that way. Uh, I, I'm a veteran. You have to go through a process. And I had to tell a couple of them, just it's like it goes through a process. But then you get the ones out there talking about, well, if you pay for for so and so and give me this X amount of, of money, right? Even, we hear about that all even, the time. Even my donor. Mm-hmm. Her person, her support person was supposed to go. Here we are down to the last week before we got to go to Pittsburgh for the transplant. She told her that she wanted two thousand dollars mm. to go. And I'm like, what? She said, yeah, she, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to get this done. And I said, mm-hmm. you know what? Forget it. I'm Hold on. I'm like, let me get back with you. I called my brother-in-law in Mississippi and I called Pittsburgh and I said, can my brother-in-law be her support person? They say they don't care. They, they, long as you, long as she has a support person, they didn't care. I called her back and said, "My brother-in-law will be your support person. He'll be on the plane. He'll be in Pittsburgh. Wow! To get this, to get this taken care of." And I'm mm. like, I just don't, I, I just don't get why people out here. You trying to, you basically saying you're gonna help somebody, but then you turn around and want to charge them two thousand dollars. Wow! What kind of people are? I'm just, I don't get it. Mm. Opportunist. That, that's, I just. And I, and I'm like, I understand people out here trying to scam people all the time and all this other stuff. I'm not one of them people. I, I don't try to scam anybody. If anything, my mama told me she was like, Mike, you always trying to fix something. You mm-hmm. always trying to make something better. Right. I'll give, I'll give my last dollar to the man out there on the sign with the sign said, "I need a burger." Mm-hmm. I'll stop and give him my last dollar because you know what? Yeah, he might go buy a beer, but at least you know what. I did what I could to help him go get some food or whatever his needs are. But the other day, I seen a, a man and a, and a lady that was at uh, I was in, at Walmart. I was coming out of there, and the guy was out there with his wife with a sign telling me his wife was pregnant. Blah blah blah. I pulled up. I gave him twenty dollars. Say, hey, this is what I got for you. Go see, what, go get some food, whatever, whatever you mm-hmm. need with that that twenty. That's all I had at that point. But it's just. I understand the world is the way it is, but you know what? It's time to change the world. 
Mm. It's time for mm -hmm. people to start getting back and believing that when like back I'm like I'm originally from Vicksburg, Mississippi. When I was growing up, you could go the neighbor can go on vacation. We used to cut their grass, get their mail, make sure their house was taken care of. That's the kind of stuff I'm used to. I'm not used yeah. to backstabbing. People believe they, they every time you do something, you don't get backstabbed. So wow. Wow. So, so Mike, um tell us now since the transplant, you created Dallas's Warrior again and in the back of you, I see some of your designs. Tell us about your company and, uh, again, what motivated you to create uh, Dallas's Warrior again. Share some of the products you got hanging up on the, with the back of All you. All right. We'll give you the screen. Okay. Let me uh, bring them out. Well, these are some of the shirts that I, I, uh, I designed. Actually, me and my wife design, and we put out to actually have where people can get and say that they are Dallas's warrior. I got those out there, and then we also have one here where if you know somebody, they can go in and they can actually support, get it to support somebody that they know that's on Dallas's. So that's that shirt, and the other one is just the red. I have multiple colors. Blue, red, uh, green, black, white, gray. So we're on the Dallas's Warrior that design. So, but then I also have for as a business for I have where I like to try to make products because at the two years that I was there on Dallas's, one thing I used to do was complain about sitting in that chair and you sit in that chair for four hours. Your butt go numb, and you just say it's uncomfortable. So I made the cushion so people can actually get that'll actually help. It's three inches thick that'll help keep you from getting to a point where your your buns, your bums are are, are hurting, and your, your legs stiff up, and you can't get up and walk half the time when you're on, on that treatment for all that all that time. I uh, let me see here. I made hats for. For the um, for Dallas Warrior gear, I made up the upper sleeves. I would I would show you how to put it on, but honestly, my my arms are too big for. This is actually made for women right now. I haven't got it. I haven't started making the men ones yet, but I need to get the information because every man's arm is different from the other. One. So I've been trying to get every man get the other get some people to send me information, their sizes and stuff like that. But I also have it where you can get it with, with just the medical symbol on it, or you can get it like this where it says restricted excrementing on it. It has the medical symbol on the, on the, on the bottom to let the, uh, just say, and God forbid, you're in an accident and you can't speak to the people to let them know that they can't put a blood pressure cuff on your arm. This will let them know that you have a medical issue and that they can't actually use that arm up there. Yeah, they can probably sit there and go, uh, look at your arm and go, yeah, okay, something's going on. But this will actually tell them what's going on. And then they can actually be able to go in your history and find out what's going on before they do something. Because if you're unconscious, you can't tell them exactly what's going on with you. I have uh, for as the sleeves. I have multiple colors and sleeves. Oh, uh, if if you want red, white, and blue, I got red, white, blue, black, gray, purple, whatever color. I had them made them into rainbow colors and stuff like that. I have the, the ability to actually design these and put whatever you want on them. And I had this one here that's right behind me. It's one of the ones out there that. I say, if you send me your information and you want to advertise, use this, use your sleeve to advertise for a donor. Because at this, uh, to me, when I started advertising and I started getting my mindset on doing it, it was by any means necessary for me. I was going to find somehow to get that information and ready to say, hey, okay, this is what we'll, I want to do for you. But then the latest thing I have, you see the, the bag here, 
I have a gift bag. Oh, wait a minute. This, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. All right. I have the gift bag here. It actually has, let me pull it out. It comes with, it comes with the blanket. And I decided that on these on the blankets to put positive messages for people to say, okay, hey, be strong, warriors, because hey, we're, you're not in it by yourself. And a lot of people think that they're in it by themselves because nobody else would actually let them know that hey, we know how you feel, and we're we're and we're trying to do something about it. And then it also has <clears throat> it comes with the the other sleeve for females. The other sleeve right here, that's for the upper upper arm for your graft or for the fistula that's up up that's up in your upper arm. And this is the one that people like. And for the for the ladies out there, it also comes with a shirt. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. It comes with the shirt. Up oh, wrong way. All right this way right there so it comes with the shirt inside the untie the gift bag that for for the ladies to wear and i believe that's at this point that's it that's all we have in the in in for the gift bag so we're try, trying to come up with better ideals to make people you know hey feel better about themselves yeah it, you own dialysis but you don't have to sit there and feel like you just the world is to the end. You can get stuff to make you feel better and go, you know, yeah. hey, if you're going to be there, your mouth, your mouth will look good while you're doing it. That's yes. what my, my, huh? I love it. I'm just saying, yes, I love it. I'm thinking of cool. stuff for you. Like <laughs> now, now right. Mike, um, do you do custom made items that somebody came to you and said, Mike, I like that restricted arm sleeve, but can you make me one without the restricted material, uh, without the restricted stuff, and make it like my favorite NBA or my favorite football team? Can you put logos on it? Well, the one thing about the logo is that you actually have to have the approval of the NFL, the NBA, uh, the, uh, even in the National Hockey League. Yeah. Uh, I have but anything else my- you could. But yeah, anything else, basically, you could, as long as they you know for copyrights and stuff like that. I want to get to a point where I'm actually, I talked to a guy up here in Green Bay. He he works with the Packers, and he said he was going to get me connected to some of the members soon that, that, that he know that actually talks to the NFL and see can I get in and have a, uh, show them the product and see can I get the approval. So, Everything's gonna take a little time, but yeah, that's one of the things that my first thing that I did when I started making these sleeves, I went in, I put a star on it, and I put Dallas Cowboys because I'm a Cowboy fan. I'm from the South, so sorry, and I, I know <laughs> Pittsburgh and all the Philadelphia, <laughs> but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a Cowboy fan, so I put the Cowboys on it, and I went to a patent lawyer because I wanted to. I was started the patent process, and he's like, "Well, you know that cowboy might get you in trouble." I'm like, "Well, you know, I'm not gonna go around and and, and try to put it. This this was that sleeve was just for me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a cowboy fan. If they, if they want to sue me over that, then they can sue me over that because I'm mm-hmm. a cowboy fan." So, Mike, but, yes, sir. Do you make scullies or like the hats so patients when they go to clinics in the air? I, be coming down on their head and they need to cover their head up and sometimes they may use blankets to cover up but do you have like any type of a scully or wool hats that one can wear to cover up actually i i i did do one i did one uh-huh. and i'm trying to find a i was looking at as far as like a vendor uh, to see can i actually get it get them at a, a decent price because i'm trying to give offer products that you know, I'm not trying to be become a millionaire. I'm trying to offer mm-hmm. products that's gonna help people when when they, in the time of their need when they at Dallas or where that's that's the whole reason I'm doing this to help people. Right. And so I'm, I'm, 
Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Well, no, go, no, go, go ahead. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, but that's why, yes, I am looking at doing that. I did one for myself because I, well, me and your hair is almost the same. You know, <laughs> right. It, it get a cold here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, I actually did one for myself, but then I was like, well, I'm gonna see. Can I actually probably talk to a vendor and see? Can I get get the products and get them at a, a good price? And just mm -hmm. put the logo on them, put whatever, put whatever. If you call me and, and leave me your information, you can instant message me. You can, I got my email out there, the business email, my personal email. If you want to just sit there and say, hey, could you design this? If I have the, cap the capabilities of designing it right now, I'll do it. And if I don't have the capabilities, I'll figure out how to get the capabilities to do it. That's so right. That's, a soldier I always figure out how to get the mission done. That's it. <laughs> Real quick, right. after the show is over, I can like give you some information to some vendors, um, to some whole, actually some wholesale places, um, where you could uh -huh. get stuff from. Okay. 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 Right. Yeah, Marie. I mean, uh, Tamika is the uh, information yeah. lady on that type of stuff. Actually, some wholesale <laughs> stuff where you get it like next, to, next to next to nothing. You don't even have to order right. a quantity. Yeah, because mm. when I was in college, we actually went up to Mel up to Minnesota to one of the vendors. I guess it was a vendor thing where they, you can go in and you can get stuff. And I was like, that's just that's what I wanted to do, where you can go in one of them places and get stuff at a at a, at a decent price, so I can bring bring stuff out to the people that that they can get at affordable, prices. affordable prices. Affordable right. prices, right? Right. I'm mm -hmm. not trying. I'm not trying to break the bank with anybody. Of course I not. I mean, we know, can see I'm that. to the point where I mean, I'm to the point where Steve and Tamika, if somebody wanted to, they they like, well, I uh, got the money, and I'll send you one if you want to try it. I will send you. You give me your information. I will send wow. you one. So you can sit here and try the product and and and, and see what you say. Y'all hear this if you're watching. Wow. As long as you send me, as long as you send me feedback and tell me exactly what you think, because I actually sent my niece. She's in Chicago. She's at the uh, Davida unit down in Chicago. I sent twelve of the sleeves, the, the first ones that I made. I sent twelve of them down there to her unit and told her, "Hey, give it out to the people down there. See what they say and let me know what exactly what they think." Yeah, she came I back and she she texted me back and said after about two weeks, she said. Unk, they love them. They love them. So I'm like, well, that's that's a good sign right there. Let me keep on doing what I'm doing. So yes, I work. You have the information at the bottom too. Yeah. Go ahead, Tamika. No, I was gonna say I work in di I work in dialysis, and I can show my patients your page, or if you could create like the what's it like the five by seven fly um I'm sorry fly <laughs> flyers and like send them to different units. I'm sorry, right. I'm not going crazy right now with all these different. Well, ideas. see, that's one of the things. One of the nurses <laughs> up there at the uh, VA, she came from the from Davida, and I know at the Davida unit that I was at up there in Rochester, Minnesota, it was they have a sign say no soliciting, and she's no. like, "Well, you just go." And I'm like, "Well, they they have a sign that said no soliciting, so that no. means you, can, you can't." So that's my thing. I'm like trying to. If I can figure out the right people to go talk to, because I don't, I don't, I don't need nobody calling the man, you know, saying, <laughs> having coming over, coming over there trying to say, okay, yeah, you don't, you trespass it. I'm like, I don't, I don't need all that drama. So, mm -hmm. right, but yeah, it's it's gonna work out. Patience, it's gonna work out. Right, y'all heard him. If you want a sample, reach out to him. We got his Mike's information scrolling at the bottom in the ticker. He's going to give his information and everything before uh, the show is over because the inf I mean the products are well, and I wish I had one in my hand. I mean I know you um you know have your imp all, you know some of your merchandise with you, but you know if you send right. us like a sample or something, we would love to keep helping you um you know promote these products to help warriors right. and even like we talked about. With, with the gloves, you even make gloves if it was requested because sometimes warriors, the arm where they have the access, uh, it steals blood from the lower yeah. extremities. And a lot of warriors complain of uh, numbness or their hands feeling cold during dialysis. 
So we tell them to bring a glove, but they can get a dialysis uh, warrior gear glove that's signature by you, uh, good material that they can wear in dialysis and not have to uh, use one of their other gloves uh, and maybe lose it or something. I got an idea for that and I got the perfect thing for it. I'm, I'm gonna go do some little research on that, and probably by next week I'm gonna have something for you. I got a good idea for it. For it, and that's awesome. That's awesome. Right. See, guys, this is what we try to do. To make and I at Urban Health Outreach Media is bring individual warriors like Michael Scott to share uh, what he's doing for the community. And um, here you go, right here. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, now, like I say, Steve, I told you earlier I have a surprise for you. That is another idea that I, I, I just, the other night I woke up at about 2 o'clock and said, huh, I had to write it down. And the very next the morning when I woke up, I started to putting together the, the stuff to, to make it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to show you the uh, one of the new items that I plan on bringing out. For all you pet lovers out there. Wait a minute. Here we go. This is for your for your 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 friend, your best friend. He can also help advertise for a kidney. You can actually have this where it can be. It can say, "My best friend needs a kidney." So uh, this is a little cover that goes over the dog, over your dog when you take him out. He can, you know, he can actually help you advertise. Because to me. I believe advertising is the key. I also have uh, one more to show you. This is the other one. I just made this today. I went and got the material. I made it myself. I did all the work, all the stitching, everything that you see. I sewed it. I made it. A lot of people don't believe it, but I actually did. I made this myself. And it says Dallas is Warrior Canine. So, and it's on both sides of it. And then all you have to do is it has Velcro. You can Velcro it to up under the dog. And it's, it'll, it'll keep them warm. It's pretty good, nice material. I don't really go and get cheap material. I try to find the the best material for, for, for a cheap price. So I want to make sure when I'm offering, offering uh, patients and customer stuff that it's, it's quality material. And, and, and look, <laughs> with the dog thing, right? You right. Know, see, if someone, see, if someone was oh, yeah. thinking, they could buy that dog thing and say, hey, hey, Mr. Scott, you know, I'm on a transplant list. Can you, if they got a dog, you could put one and say, my owner needs a kidney, right? Right. right. On that. Yes. I mean, right. That's a good idea. Right. Yeah. And then, and, and and Steve, that's a, I, I went out there that morning after I thought about the idea. I researched it, and honestly, I have not found anything out there that people are offering people that they can sit here. Your man, he, he, that's your best friend. Let your best friend advertise for you. Oh my God. Like, also, when you walk, when you walk up there to the to the dog park, he can sit there and have that on there. He can advertise, and you never know who who you're gonna run into. When you're walking them, they're like people got the rescue dogs. Yes. Were you going to say to me again? No, I was going to say he could send like a small prototype to the veterinarians, like, you know, to the dog hospitals. Right. You know, absolutely. But there's so much that people could do with your product yeah, like, to advertise uh, right. to get a kid, oh especially what you just showed that dog thing. I mean, I don't have no pet. And I, so but if, dog? we have I'm a lot of it. we have a lot of pet lovers, and I only and I know one. I hope he's watching. Brian Olivas out in California, my man. He always um, show pictures of his dog, and he's on yeah. the transplant list. And he was on Warriors Quest. So Brian, man, buy your dog one of these. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, let him do it. If you let if you send me, me if you send me what size dog you got what in. But it don't matter if he's a teacup or if he's a chihuahua, or if he's a a, a, a a German Shepherd, 
If you want maybe. me to make you a cover for him to help advertise, I, and I'm telling you. And you, maybe y'all just pay for the shipping and handling since Mike is 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 putting in the work and the effort. Yeah. But he's not. I mean, I'm sure you're not going to like people bombard you. So it may just be for a limited time only, and then you may have to pay pay the price. This is like a promotional uh, for Mike. Uh, but like he said. If you got a dog and you're on the transplant list, Tamika, I never even thought of that. And Jared and Jeffrey, if you're watching, man, y'all better do something or <laughs> I don't know, right? I, I, I am a person that thinks outside the box. You know, everybody be talking about, yeah, you got to think. I, I, I ask people what box. Cause I don't, I, I I never thought I was inside of a box, so it's just I, I I I'm coming up with new things, and it's all about advertising, trying to help people get what they need, and get off the dialysis list. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, it's life saving, but you know what? There's other means you can you can get off there, get your find your live donor, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that I want to do. I want to help people find live donors and stop right. waiting for cadavers. And 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 get back to life. Right, right. Well, yeah. right. one more time. Show, oh show that dog. I'm like uh, going crazy one more time. Dead. Huh? Show me that dog um sweater that you had that the you black had. one on it. Uh, the uh the brown one. Here. The brown one? Right. Kind of orange. It's orange and green. It says Dallas is Warrior K9. And it's on both sides. It actually fits my dog. I have a uh, silky terrier, and I, I I used him as the model to make this. I actually made this from scratch. I didn't have any any patterns or anything like that. I took out a. I used to be working for. I used to be an electrician and a, and a handyman before I really got sick. When I was in Vegas, I had my own handyman business. So I took out a ruler and a measurer and tape and, and ruler tape and and just measured and came up with this and. Made sure I put it on my dog and it fits him just fine. So, yep. I see the Velcro below I'm it. Gonna, um, I will find a way. And so, instead of having that, if someone wanted something custom made, you can do that, right? So, instead of having uh, that K9, what you had on it, you again, you can have something like my partner needs a kidney and have right. O positive and if you're a donor, call this number. Right. Why are you walking the dog, yeah. right? Right. Why are you yeah. walking the dog? You don't even have to have a conversation with the person. They see right. the dog walking. I mean, and genius. They, they you're, they a genius. <laughs> you're a genius. You're a genius. I wouldn't go that far, Steve. But... No. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even talk right now because my mind is going crazy with all these things to tell them. And, and look, Tamika, again, what we try to tell the people watching is share this program because, look, you're not going to get any type of information from the dialysis unit or from National Kidney Foundation or any of these closed groups that are out there because they would not let Michael come in and advertise because of whatever you know, the group is, of course, they want to keep the focus on whatever the group is about. Yeah. However, with that being said, you're a kidney warrior. You're trying to make a difference and you're making things that one, just for comfort measures, but two, with this whole, with this whole transplant advertisement, you could just take that to another level. I mean, the right. Brown brothers, you know, we try to think of ways and come up with ways uh, to promote kidney donors. I mean, you know, for donors. Right. And it's like you can work with the Brown brothers and they can give you an emblem or whatever. And you can transpire on on your thing. So I can have the warrior's face because they do these graphics. You got to see them. The right. point is, 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 is combining uh art and 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 artistry well art and you sewing right. to help warriors uh i'm actually an artist too just to let you yeah, know yeah yeah no, okay <laughs> I Boy, this is just years. another 
this is another outlet to advertise for a donor. And if you're watching right. this, if you're not sharing this broadcast, uh, if you're not paying attention or not getting something out of this, if you're on the transplant list, this is one way that you found out for free how you can donate using your pet if you don't if you haven't right. already do it. We all know about the magnets on the car. Mm -hmm. right. Now, whatever pet you got, you walk, I don't know, can have an iguana or a monkey I'm or telling you, whatever pet whatever. you have. You but send you me can use that pet. You to send me you send oh me God. his size and I guarantee you I'll make some for. Listen. Hold oh, that thought. It just came to my mind that a child can put well, you could put on the back of a child's jacket. My mom needs yeah. the kidney. Right. Or the yeah. t shirt. No, on right. the back on the back of the jacket as a child's going to school, my mom needs a kidney. That right there is gonna have backpack. Pop. Yep. A backpack. On a backpack. Yep, my mom needs a kidney. Yep. On a backpack. Yep. You can be yeah. it's, it's 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 so yeah. many things out here that we can do. They, they, to get the message out, and that's what it. And it, it can be little, small, big. I was, and honestly, when I first started advertising my truck, I was trying to. I went out to deal a GoFundMe because I wanted to get a billboard right. and, and put it on a billboard. But that didn't work out because people were talking. Well, you might be trying to scam. Me. I'm not trying to scam nobody. I'm just at that point. I wanted a kidney and I wanted to live. So. And that's why I was mm. like, well, since I can't get a billboard, wow. here go the truck. I, I, I place magnets all across that truck. So it, to, wow. to me, again, it's it's about advertising. I believe, firmly believe, if you advertise for a person that you need a kidney, somebody go answer that call. I had right. 130 people answer my call. And all that. Holy the, smoke. The, the first Wait a minute. You had 130 people answer your call are you serious a hundred and i i have a book i have a book in my in, in the back there in the bedroom with everybody's name on it that sent me the information and said that they wanted to be a donor and a my lot of them God. said a so lot of them said they didn't, do go ahead i'm sorry i feel a lot of them said they just didn't know what to do they don't know what to do uh, to be a donor so so basically so so basically what you're saying is you have a database of 130 people that yeah. somehow may want to donate but yeah. don't know how. I yeah. mean, you you could possibly get help many more people yes. if they reached out to you. I yes. mean, I had I had a girl wow. like, like like I said before, I had a girl last night sent me an email saying that she was a marine. She heard about my story. And if I still need a kidney, she was B positive, and she all she needed to know is what when she needed to go get tested, what she needed to do. And to she me, said, I, mm. Mm -mm. so and then I, and I still I still get phone calls from people. I had a guy from Michigan call me last month and wow. said, "Hey, you do you still need a kidney?" I said, "Thank you for uh, 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 the first wow. person that got in con con contact with was was a person that." Donate the kidney. I'm doing well. I really appreciate it. You said, all right, no problem. Because if you need it. one, you can have it. Are you hearing this? He's getting calls yeah. after his transplant, and other people are not getting a call, and they're going on years waiting. Right. What's wrong well, with Steve, this picture? Steve, let me tell you, I, I kind of got a big mouth. My wife said I got a big mouth, and I am not scared to tell anybody. I am not ashamed or scared or afraid. I would talk to anybody. Anytime and tell uh, if if you out there and you and you want to advertise for yourself, I'll advertise for you. Because that's one of the reason I started this business was to get to a point where I had enough money to start advertising. That hey, there are people out here. It's a million plus billion people in, in, on this planet. Mm. Out of that, mm. out of that many numbers, you think that we can't find a million people that want to help out? I think we can. And that's what I believe. I believe we can find the people, live donors, to get people off that list, to get mm -hmm. you back to a quality of life, living your life, doing things, hanging out with your kids, get out of that bed, stop feeling fatigued, go back to doing what you want to do in life. 
Wow. And that's one of the things, one, one of my goals is to try to help people do that. Mm -hmm. wow. Right. So Denise, he's, he's in Wisconsin. What we had uh, a supporter just got in watching the show late. Uh, where are you again, Mike? I am in De Pere, Wisconsin, right outside of Green Bay. And, then, and that's a funny thing. A Cowboy fan in Green Bay. <laughs> so. oh, right. right. Yeah. Hi, Denise. Yeah. Um, wow. We, we definitely went over. I mean, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Mike, one, one last question um, yeah. before we get ready to go. But did, at any time when you was waiting for your donor uh, to go through the testing, were there any time that you got discouraged or any thought in the back of your mind that this wasn't going to happen? Did you ever it, think about that? It was many times, Steve, that I got to a point where I'm like, this just, it doesn't seem like this is going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to find a person, a donor. And I'm telling you, after, after that news broadcast, mm -hmm. it, it, it opened up so many, it, it opened up my eyes. And it made me see that, you know, there are still people out here that actually do care and actually do want to help, but they just don't know how to help. So mm -hmm. me and my donor at one point was talking about coming up with, we wanted to come up with a nonprofit and she actually named it Hope from me to you. And after we, I went through trying to figure out how much it takes to get a, a nonprofit started. I'm like, well, this is going to be a hard, a hard task to get it started. Nope, nope, no, it's not. No, it's not. Well, yeah, it's not. It's you not. can fast track it. Yeah, yep. no, it's well, not. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm glad you. that I met you too. We're gonna help. So we can work together. And, and, and oh, absolutely. Because what y'all doing is what y'all doing is what I wanted to do with hope. Yeah. And now it's like now I can concentrate on instead of trying to get all that done with it. Hope I can just concentrate on this business here, getting things out, getting people to the point where they can understand that, that advertising is your key. You are going to find somebody who said, what blood type? When you need it? All right. I'm no problem. And, and, and you might find somebody who say, yeah, they, yeah, we're going to do it. But then they might back out. But then you're going to run into somebody else. Trust me. My mom said, God gives you what you can handle. And that's what she used to tell me. Michael, God gives you what you what you can handle. He don't give he don't give he ain't gonna give you too much, but he's gonna give you what you can handle and what you can do. So right. therefore, don't worry. We, we, you got people like us who's out here trying to help make this process easier and trying to get you, get people off. And that's what I wanted to do. I'm I'm paying it for it until the day that I, it's time for me to go home. I'm planning to pay it for it and help people get off that list. Right. So, Mike, before we go out, um, can you just leave us? Well, can you just leave us with some um, encouraging thoughts for someone who may be watching this program who's on the transplant list or um, on Dallas is not on the transplant list or in some stage of kidney disease? And being that you're from the military, if, if, if these were soldiers and and and, right. and you were leading them uh, or trying to encourage them, what would you say, uh, given your experience of what you've been through up until this point? What would you tell that person watching right now that's oh. sitting on the machine or, or waiting for a kidney or on their way to dialysis? I'll tell that person about the fact that I, what I went through, what how I felt, and and, and actually, you know, I when I was, when I was basic, I was a squad leader, and I'll sit there and, and, and explain to them how we can get it done, because that's what I used to do when I was I had soldiers that I had to train and had I, we had to come together, we had to come together as a unit to make things happen, and, and that's one of the things that these the people need to understand that yeah. We got to come together. We got to, there, there are people out here. We need to come together, help each other, get to, get, get people to understand what Dallas is really about. And then 
let's figure out how to get you off that list. Let's figure out how to get you out of it. I'm saying let's 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 get you out of the chair because that chair sucks. I'm not, I'm just gonna be honest with you. The chair sucks. So I I want to get people out of that chair, back out doing what you want to do to life. And if if it, by whatever I could do to help you get that, is what I plan on doing. I'm gonna help many as people I can to get out of that chair because I used to hate that chair. I really did. Sure, I'm sure. Uh, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Uh, well, I don't know who many people. I guess my probably majority of my family. That's I have eleven. Well, it's eleven of us, and and they're probably to my whole family. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I have about seventy or eighty nieces and nephews. I have a huge family. So to everybody all over the United States and in the, in other countries, how you doing? And, and I'm doing well. I'm trying I'm to show sure your lovely wife. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to get her to come out here and be on on the camera, but she 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 declined. She oh, declined. that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure we'll meet her one day. Mm. Right, mm. right. But <laughs> other than that. Mike, how can people reach you? I mean, they we got your things on. We've been having your information at the bottom of the ticker. But if people want to reach out to you and get a dog a sweater or anything or call you, uh, how the, can they reach you? They can reach me on, on the Esty. Esty? I'm, my wife keeps telling me I say it wrong. Etsy. I'm from I'm, not, I'm from the South, so I'm, I'm giving you my best shot. <laughs> But you can reach out to me. You can message, instant message me on on that site. Go to my site SD, out there. Mm -hmm. It's the Dialysis Warrior. I mean, uh, it's just one one word. is Dialysis Warrior gear out mm -hmm. there. If you put that in on on the site, it'll pull up pull up my site, and you can go in and instant message me there. Or if you want to go to uh, my, I have the email. You can go to. Dallas Warrior Gear, which is basically one word at yahoo.com. And you can leave me a, a, a message on the email. Or you can look me up on Facebook and instant message to me, and I'll get back with you. I'll get and try to figure out exactly what you want to get done, and, and we'll go from there. Wow. All right. Wow. And uh, if they, if you, if you, uh, I just got a new business number. I'll even give you my business number. You can call me on the, my business number. 920-883-8303. 920. What's that? 883. Uh-huh. 8303. All right. And if you can't get me that way, you can go get a pterodactyl and send me a, a homing pigeon pterodactyl. I'll take any any. <laughs> Any form of communications. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we got his number up. If you want to reach out to him again, we didn't talked about some great ideas. And if you're yeah. watching this and you're on the transplant list and you're trying to advertise and find the kidney, look, Mike, he wasn't ashamed to go out and ask. He, right. he seek and he found it. Mm. And now he's trying to help other people do the same way. The same. Yeah. The I same. mean. I the proved Brown that it brothers worked. can't do it all. Mike can't just do it all. Um, anybody else who's advocating for certain uh, individuals or people can't do it all. It takes a collaborative effort. Yes. Uh, this disease is so big to make. Uh, I mean, even we can't do it all with this broadcast, but we try to hit right. every uh, aspect of kidney disease. Right, but what right. he's doing will touch a lot will touch a lot of people absolutely because absolutely there's so there's so many people that hide from this disease because of how the sorry for how the excesses look mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. and, absolutely and, and that and that's one of my motivations uh, to make the make the sleeve to make the product so if you can go out you can you if you don't want to advertise that you need a kidney on it or you don't want them to know this medical, you can just still get it. You I'll give it. I'll send it to you plain. It, it whatever you whichever way you want it, I can get it done. But mm. to me, to me, if if I'm going to be if that was me in that position again, I'm gonna advertise. I want to advertise. I'm gonna get. I'll, I'll get a shirt. I'll have magnets. I'll get 
if I had the money, I'll get a, a billboard. So okay. I'm, I, that's that is where I'm at with the whole thing. You have to get out there and, and get the word out. Don't be afraid to get the word out. Mm-hmm. Now let's 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 start bringing everything to the front of the of of the of the thing so we can actually people will know because that's the only way. That's the way we will get people off that list mm-hmm. to get the word out. They, can get the word. they have to help us get the word out. We can do so much, but you got to be willing to, to do the help, do your part. And let's get the word out. That's we right, Tamika. Mm-hmm. You got to do your part. Got to do your part because it's not going to happen has, by itself. Everyone has to do their part. Mm-hmm. Has to do their part. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike. Well, man, again, we 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 even stayed over half an hour for you. That's that's how important this broadcast is. I appreciate and, that. Um, no, absolutely, man, because you have an important product, have a definitely great mm-hmm. story. And um, we just hope our warriors who's watching it that may be on the transplant or they have a family member or they they can buy that for their family member's pet or something. Yes. Um, right. It's just so much right. that they can use, uh, do with your product that yeah. and then you're willing to send out a sample or all you want is feedback. feedback. That's right. all you want. That's and it. then, and then, Mike. Once you get your feedback, you can let people know that this is clinically proven. Right, right. Okay. Because, because I, I honestly, I have had, had doctors and nurses look at it, and they said basically said that it was a good idea, and they told me to go get a pad. Yep, go oh. get the pad. Yep, that's what I have right. for my private chat. Go get it. Go get the pad. Right, I'm sure you already have it patent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I started already started that. I started that process. So good. Yeah. good, good wow. Good, wow. Good. It's protected. Oh, great story. Great story. Good. So I love it. I Mike, love it. Uh, I know I said I had one more question, but this is the last one. Okay. If someone's watching this and they're on dialysis, um, and they want to do what you're doing, what would you recommend? Uh, well, the first thing if you want to do what I'm doing is to believe. You have to believe that this actually is going to come. Something good is going to come out of it. Because at first I didn't believe, and then after I, after that 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 incident that happened in the unit, it was like, what I believe or not, something got to change. And that's why I went in and, and did what I did. So if you want to get out there and start advertising on your truck, your car, bird, dog, horse, <laughs> cow. It, what, whatever you, the means are that you want to sit here and advertise on, I'll say as, that's where you start. You start advertising and you start telling friends. You start telling friends, families, tell the stranger, tell your neighbor, tell everybody you can tell because after you get through doing all that, you're going to end up, somebody going to end up answering your call. And, and, and the biggest thing is, is to me, I have a, a very good friendship with the girl up here at the news. And if I come mm. down to the point where I have to, that I need to get out there and say and have mm. another interview with her and get the word out, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll yeah I may fly up. down there. I may fly. I'll, I will call that. <laughs> I will call her up and say, "This is what's going on. Or we I, we need to do another interview. Mm-hmm. I got this people here or that person. We we'll do it." And then wow. I'm, I'm telling you, I thought being here in Green Bay, somebody from California called me. Cause they seen it on the TV out in California, so it don't mean wow. that because you you in you in Florida or uh, Alaska that or you can't Texas. get it done. Right, right, right. right. All we got to do is get it on the news. So we have to get it on the news here. It'll spread. Wow. Yeah, that what they say, you build it, they'll come. Wow. So wow. that's what you got to be prepared to do. Let's build it. Let's build it where they, where they can get off this uh, off that get out of that chair. Wow. All right, man. Um, again, man, you didn't, wow. Yes. You didn't came with a lot of great information mm-hmm. and, and, and we look forward working with you yes. and helping you, uh, raise awareness and, and just keep yes. it moving so yep. we can get it mainstream and bring, uh, uh, shed light on this, on this disease, which is the ninth leading cause of death in the United States. Right. So Mike W. Scott, CEO, executive director of uh, Dallas's Warrior Gear. 
I mean, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your information, your story, and your wonderful products. Yes. All right. Steve yeah. and Tamika, I appreciate you having me on here. And I, I really enjoyed the time. I could probably sit here and talk to you for another hour. So but I understand <laughs> that I understand that you gotta talk to other people. No, we're gonna so. uh, bring back we're gonna bring you back on. We're gonna bring you back, show. yes, a fo a follow up. But yeah, um, absolutely. But if you, right. if you look in the private chat, I left you a lot of information in it. Okay. Okay. All you gotta do is just write it down or cut um, or copy and paste it. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, if you can I'll you see that. the private chat? Yeah, I can see it right okay, now. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, All right, Mike. So again, thank you for coming on Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve. We look forward to having you again. And also, uh, I'm going to have Jared Brown reach out to you. Uh, he's part of the Brown Brothers. So you could uh, be a co-host on the Warriors Quest show that we do every Wednesday from 8.30 to 9.30, where we, we interview uh, warriors looking for a kidney, a live donor, you know, to broadcast, get us an opportunity to get to know the person and give their uh, information out where someone was to want to donate. They can call the number, uh, know where the transplant center is mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So we would love to have you on that show as well to co-host right. with uh, Jared A. Brown. Yeah. All right. Sounds yeah. great. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe yeah. Yeah, maybe and maybe uh Steve and Tamika we can use them that hundred and twenty nine people that I have in that book back there. Yes. We can reach out to them and uh, start getting people connected. Yeah, that'll that'll be awesome. Oh All my right. gosh, see y'all guys here it is. Where yes. else yes. would you get yes. this type of information yes. from? So wow. Mike, thank you so much I for coming you. on. And we will be uh talking to you. Uh, in the coming days and after this broadcast about that to collaborate. Yes. All right. Sure. All right. Thank All right. you. Again, God. Thank God you for coming you. on. Have a good thank night. You, you too. Tell your wife we said hello. Yes. All right. I will. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. That was so awesome. I really needed that. I needed yeah. That. Tamika, you did a good job and sending that article to me saying we need to uh, locate this gentleman. I thought it was going to be a hard process because, right. you know, you see him on the news uh, and, and you're trying to find on Facebook and mm -hmm. this and that. They don't but, want to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he was so gracious enough yes. to uh, reach back out to us and do this interview. So this was a great show. And I never even thought about what he's doing um, to like the pet thing to mm -hmm. advertise for their owner for for a donor, that I think that's a good idea, especially yeah. for warriors who may have pets, mm -hmm. walk their dogs, go to the dog park, and put that on, mm -hmm. and um, walk around and see, yes. you know what what happens. Okay, or even for the pets that's on dialysis, you know. Mm hmm. You said the pets on dialysis? Yeah, the pets on dialysis. Not not saying advertising for a kidney, but just acknowledging that the dog is on the dog is on dialysis. They yeah. got I mean, I never seen dogs. that here. Yeah, they got dogs and cats on dialysis. Wow. I mean, I knew that they did it, but I didn't know they yes. were actually Yes, and they pay cash to tend to I'm sorry, to send their to send their animals there. Wow. Yes, you got to look it up. I did all that research. <laughs> I know. I didn't even think about it, but wow. Listen, I had to read because I was like, what? They got fistulas and catheters. You got to listen. Mm. I'm going to put some pics up one day and show y'all. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yes. Don't just say, don't people, they have people over some people overseas can't even get dialysis, and you got animals getting it. Not, I mean, nothing against that, but I'm playing devil advocate. What about people over in Cameroon that can't even get supplies and only do treatment maybe one or two days every other week? Mm. I mean, that's crazy. Well, I wonder how much will it, it take to, for us to send them supplies. Right, a <laughs> lot of money. <laughs> but but look, and even with the dogs and the uh, owners 
like boredom and, and people to have money, how they lavish the pets and, mm -hmm. you know, to build these little homes for these dogs. Mm -hmm. But then you got people that's homeless, you know, like something's wrong with this picture. That's just me. You know, all this money, the animals, but you got people homeless and dying because they can't get enough insulin or this or that. So, uh, but this was a great show, uh, Tamika. This was a very good show, and I look forward to uh, finding the guest for next week. Yes, 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 yes. This was a really good show. But before the show ends, like I said, this right here, like, boosted my energy because with the Kobe Brown situation, my heart just was in so many pieces being, sure. a, being a wife and a mother. I can't, I can't imagine, you know. And even though like the fam the families probably would never see the broadcast, just condolences go out to everyone, not just Kobe Brown family, but the everybody involved. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that just like every time I think of it, I get like teary eyed be because like it could happen to any one of us. Sure. You know, sure. and to yeah. and to lose your to lose your husband and your daughter. To lose, to lose your mother, your father, and your sister, you know, like, it's just so heartbroken. I'm just like, I still. No, I get it, because I'm I was heartbroken about my friend, mentor, that, that passed away. Well, I don't think, I'm not sure if he actually passed away yet, but they took him off life support. And wow. wife said he had uh, about less than 72 hours. Uh, to live from aggressive form of lung cancer. That's the picture I posted in the beginning, uh, Eric Edmonds. He was a patient in uh, Rosenberg, Texas, that I met during my travel assignment in 2007. Uh, he went on to get a kidney transplant that was hep C. Uh, they gave him Harboni, uh, cleared it up. He had a successful run with it. It didn't reject or anything. It was the lung cancer that they got him. So, wow. You know what, Steve? Let's just have a moment of silence for anyone that just didn't wake up this morning or someone that's just going through something. You know, I know we're not the most religious show where we talk <laughs> about religion, but just having a moment of silence and, you know, respect for those who no longer here. I don't think it would hurt mm -hmm. anything. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining this show. We really appreciate you. Please constantly share our information. We do it from our heart to try to get the word out there about kidney disease, prevention, education, and transplant awareness. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, and also please donate to the Brown Brothers production team. They do so much with so many warriors uh, for free. I mean, $5, $1, $0.50, $10, whatever you can do to help these guys offset the cost of uh, time, energy, yeah. supplies, boosting the post, and just trying to reach out uh, as far as they can to help uh, warriors find a living donor. So please, we did. It's a page out called uh, the Brown Brothers Production Team. Uh, fundraiser please look for it and and do whatever you can like tamika said uh please share this post and also uh subscribe to our youtube channel urban health outreach media uh we need your support and also i didn't tell you tamika uh we have now a private group called dialysis 101 we're sending out special invites uh to people who want to learn and participate and, and be mindful of, of their treatment and interact and engage, ask questions uh, about what's going on with their treatment. Uh, we're going to be I doing, like that. yeah, we're going to be doing stuff in this group that we're not going to be doing on these shows. Mm. Uh, some education there. We're going to do still do education out here, but we're going to be in private. this group. Yes, yeah. yes, private. We don't like private, but this private yeah. is good because it's going to be education we'd be able to talk uh about things that you may not want to talk about openly right. uh, whether it's uh, sexual uh dating 
whatever the case may be. It'll be a private place. And that's where you'll get all the personal attention from Tamika, myself, Jerry Brown, uh, Don Edwards, Lisa Baxter. If you have questions or you need any information, that group, Dallas is 101, is going to be the place that you want to be. And the thing about it, once we get, we send out invites, once we get the first hundred uh, people in that group, um, then you're going to have to go through and answer the questions and we're going to look at and screen people. So right now we got an open quote, quote enrollment uh, where if you answer the questions, uh, there'll be order. You'll be automatically um, uh, added to the group and somebody can invite you, but you have to be a warrior or mm -hmm. a parent or a family member or caregiver. Um, so Dallas is 101. Beyond, I mean, it's out there. Huh? I'm excited for that. that yeah. Oh, you're a moderator. I sent you a, a, an administrator. I sent you wow. an invite. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's yeah, it's what... already stuff posted in the group right now. What? All, all pictures and information that I did that you're not going to see anywhere else. This is out of my private collection. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So this is because, I'm. you know, we get out so much information that we want people to engage and to have four or five people broadcast. We're still going to do our shows here, but... If you really want that information that Tamika and I deliver, yes. the patients in the unit, it's going to be like we sitting there giving you if information as if we were right there at the chair side. That's how personal we're going to be with you. Yes, I love it. I yeah, love it. yeah, absolutely. So when we get off this broadcast, I have to find it. I just looked on Facebook. I didn't see it. So yeah, It's called Dialysis 101. Oh my gosh, I so love it.